In the last video, we learned how to use the method of pulse width modulation to make an LED light blink at different rates. In this video, we're going to see how to use that same method of pulse width modulation to set the angles of our servos. To begin, let's take a look at the data sheet that comes along with the servos that we're using in our robot. Point your browser to the Parallax website as shown here and find the page for the Parallax standard servo. If you want, you can just type in the URL shown at the top of my screen here. Once you find this web page, scroll down until you see Downloads and Documentation. Expand this menu and then find the PDF file called Standard Servo Product Documentation and click to download it you will be taken to another page where you can download the PDF. This data sheet gives some basic information about your servos. It tells us that these servos can hold any position between 0 and 180 degrees. It tells us how much torque the servo has at a specified voltage 6 volts and it gives some other information about the construction and how to use the servo. For us, let's keep scrolling down. One important piece of information that we'll need to make note of is shown as the first bullet point here. This point says that the power requirements for this servo include 4 to 6 volts of DC power. This is important for us to note because the PSOC that we are using to control this servo can be set to either produce 3.3 volts or 5 volts. In order to use our servos with the PSOC, we'll need to make sure that our PSOC is running in its 5 volt mode so that it is in this range of 4 to 6 volts. It also notes us that the communication protocol for setting the positions of the servo is pulse width modulation. Now that we know how to do that, we can use pulse width modulation to set the angles of our servos. If we keep scrolling down, we will get to a section that describes for us the communication protocol for setting the position of the servo. Do you recognize this plot? This looks very similar to the line output that we saw when setting up our pulse width modulation. This plot is showing us that the servo will go to its center position, or 90 degrees, when the compare value, that is the on time of the pulse, is equal to 1.5 milliseconds. It's also showing us that the amount of time from one pulse going off until the next pulse goes on has to be approximately 20 milliseconds. Now, it's important for us to note that this amount of time is only approximate. Because of that, we can approximately meet this requirement by making the period value in our pulse string be equal to 20 milliseconds. Remember that the period value determines the amount of time between one pulse going on and the time of the next pulse going on. If we set our period time to be 20 milliseconds, we will meet this approximate requirement. So now we know that a compare time of 1.5 milliseconds will get the servo into its center position. But what about the other positions? How can we get the servo to be at a zero degree or 180 degree position? To find that out, we'll scroll up a little bit. Under the section of key specifications, 
it tells us that the range of pulse times that we can use is between 0.75 and 2.25. You might notice that the value of 1.5 is right in the center of this range. This tells us that when we set a pulse time or compare time of 0.75, the servo will move to its zero degree position. When the pulse time is set to 2.25 milliseconds, the servo will move to its 180 degree position. And when the pulse time is right in the center, the servo will move to the center position, or 90 degrees. So, in summary, we need to create a PWM that has a period value of 20 milliseconds and has a compare value that can range between 0.75 and 2.25 milliseconds. Our goal is to write some PWM code for PSOC that will set the angles of our servos. In order to do this, we need to set a period value of 20 milliseconds and we need to have a compare value that ranges between 0.75 and 2.25 milliseconds. In order to figure this out, let's remember what it is that we need to solve for. In our PWM settings, we have to set three values, the prescaler, the period, and the compare value. Go back to the part of your code that is the CYDWR section. Last time we wrote this code, we set the pin to be the LED pin. Now, we don't want the LED to flash as a result of our PWM. Instead, we want the servo to move. So I need to select a pin that is available as an output pin to which I can plug in my servo. Click on the drop down list. We want to select one of these pins that says it can be used as a TCPWM. For now, I'm just going to select pin 30. It doesn't matter which of these you choose right now. Now, let's go ahead and build our project. The building might take a while, especially since we changed the pin. Anytime you assign pins in your code, it will take a little while to build. Wait until the build finishes to check and see if you have any errors. Once you get build succeeded, go up to debug and program the PSOC. Once your device is successfully programmed, it's time to plug in the servo. Let's take a look at how to do that. First, we need to attach the servo to the baseboard. This is important because we're going to be testing the angles that we set, and we need to make sure that the servo body does not move around while we're checking to see what the angle is of the servo. So start by passing these screws, the, the 632 screws, up through the bottom of your baseboard and attach a, a, a standoff to each one. You can do this, you can save some time by just using two of these if you'd like. Just attach one in each corner and that will give you sufficient stability. Then go ahead and screw the servo down to the offsets, once again using the 632 screws and your small screwdriver. 
Do this in both corners. Before we actually plug in the servo, let's make a minor mechanical change to the servo to help us see the angles that the servo is turning to. Take one of your linear brackets and find two of the 256 screws and use them to attach the linear bracket to the servo horn. There's one thing on our PSOC that we need to make sure and change if it isn't set up this way for you already. Right up here at the top of your PSOC, there's a little set of three pins with two of them connected with this little black connector. If you attach the connector between the first two pins like this, then your PSOC will run on five volts. Since our servos need to have 5 volts in order to run, we need to make sure that the connector connects the first two pins like this. Next, turn your PSOC over on the back. If you look closely, you'll notice that each of these pins is labeled. Let's go ahead and use these labels to figure out how to connect our servo you will notice that the servo has three wires. One is red, one is black, and one of them is white. The red wire needs to be connected to the power source from the PSOC. The black wire is the ground wire and it needs to be connected to a ground pin on your PSOC. The white wire is the wire for the signal that's the wire that you want to connect to the pin that we assigned as our PWM out pin. First, let's plug in the ground wire of the servo. Plug one end of a jumper wire into the ground port of your servo like this. Now, find a pin on your PSOC that is labeled GND. Here's one up here. Now flip your PSOC over and plug in the other end of the jumper wire to that GND pin. Now take another jumper wire and plug one end into the red wire port of your servo. Now on your PSOC find a pin that's labeled VDD. VDD pins are pins that simply produce constant power. Here's a VDD pin. Let's turn the PSOC over and plug in the other end of the jumper wire to this port. Lastly, let's connect the white wire of the servo which provides the signal. Since we set our pin in our code to be pin 30, we need to plug the other end of this jumper wire into pin 30. Turn the PSOC over and find the pin that's labeled 30. It's a little bit hard to see here because the numbers are sometimes obscured by the solder connections. But this pin right here is pin 30. So we'll flip the PSOC over and plug this wire into 30. If you have it connected correctly, you should see your servo rotating from 0 degrees to 90 degrees to 180, back to 90, and then start the process over again at 0 degrees you might notice that the angles are not very exact. It doesn't actually rotate exactly 180 degrees through this process. In the next video, we're going to see how we can tune our numbers to get more accuracy out of our servo.